In my Smart Home 101 video, I mentioned how important Wi-Fi is to the center of a smart home. Well, in today's video, we're gonna give my home an upgrade. This is Google Nest Wi-Fi. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So in today's video, we're going to be setting up and showing you everything the Nest Wi-Fi can do. So over the last four years, I've actually been using an Asus router and I haven't necessarily had many problems with it, but when we do have problems, it's not fun. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the Nest Wi-Fi and see if it can solve all of the problems with current Wi-Fi. So first, let's start with a speed test on my existing Wi-Fi to see how we're doing. So over here, I'm connected to my five gigahertz network and we're using the speed test application here. And so it says that I'm getting about 46 megabits per second down and I am paying for 50 down and 50 up. So here it's about 39 and then for the upload speed, it's actually really good. So we're, <laughs> we're above what I pay for at 88. So like I said, we haven't had crazy issues, but I'm wondering if we can improve the speed of the Wi-Fi by using Nest Wi-Fi and just the overall convenience of what it offers. So taking a look at the box, we have the router and the Wi-Fi point. Now, depending on your size of home, it depends on what you are going to need. So if you have a home that has 2,200 square foot or less, you could get just the router. If you're between 2,200 and 3,800 square feet, a router and one point would be nice. And that's kind of where my home fits. I think we're at about 2,400 square feet here. And then if your home is between 3,800 square feet and 5,400 square feet, you would want to pick up a router with two base points. And so this system that we have is made for up to 3,800 square feet. So one router and one Wi-Fi point. Now over on the other side here, it talks about some of the benefits of having this system. So it intelligently works behind the scenes. That's one of the problems I have with my Wi-Fi network right now is it doesn't update automatically. And so if there's a problem, usually it's because it hasn't updated. So this will automatically do that. Here it's easy to set up. There's parental controls, device prioritization, and more all in one application built to keep your connected devices running smoothly smoothly, it automatically updates. So we have the latest security features as well and hands-free help. So the base point actually has a speaker built in so you can use it with Google Assistant. And for anyone that's interested, here are a few more specs. It is a 802.11s mesh Wi-Fi and the router can use a wired ethernet connection with dual gigabit ethernet ports and WPA3 encryption security. So enough talk, let's dive in and see what's inside the box. So here we have the Snow Router. It is a really nice looking device. And here you have the two gigabit ethernet ports and there you have the power port right on there. Other than that, there is nothing else on the device that you need. And then over here we have the Mist extension point. So on the back here, because it is a Google Assistant speaker, you have the mute switch right here and then you have the power adapter would go in right there. And then here you can see the speaker grill on the bottom there. And other than that, there's not much else on the device itself. On the bottom, you do have a nice grip here. So if you are placing it somewhere in the open, it shouldn't move around at all. And that's one of the nice things about the Nest Wi-Fi system. It looks much better than the old Wi-Fi routers with all the big antennas and everything. So these can be placed pretty much anywhere and they look great. So inside the box, we do have some instructions here. So we're going to plug in our router and then we're going to download the Google Home application. And then we're going to follow the on-screen instructions. And then here for our router setup, we're just going to plug it into the wall and then plug the cable that comes in the box into the modem. And we also have the power adapters and one ethernet cable that come in the box as well. Now these both use a 15 watt power adapter. So each of these will work the same on each device. And there is our 6.5 foot ethernet cable. And that is everything inside of the box. Now, one of the main differences between the previous Google Wi-Fi system is that each base point had the option to plug directly into the router or into a cable that you may have in that location. Uh, not a huge deal, but that was one of the main things that this Wi-Fi system had that this does not. So let's go ahead and get these plugged in and set up. Now, before we get this set up on my existing router, I currently have 58 devices connected to it. So we're gonna make sure that through this process, it's as seamless as possible going from our existing router to the Nest Wi-Fi system. Now we will be using the Google Home application to get this set up 
Previously with Google Wi-Fi, you would use the Google Wi-Fi app. We still will use that today, but I'm going to set up everything in the Google Home application. So now the next step is to plug in our Nest Wi-Fi right into the internet. So over here on the bottom of the device, you have the WAN cable, and then you have the other option to extend your Wi-Fi to a switch, and we'll be doing that as well. So the first thing we'll need to do is plug in a ethernet cable directly into the Nest Wi-Fi, and then the other end will go directly into our modem. So I'm gonna get this all set up here in my office, and then I'm going to go and show you where I've added these into the room. So we're gonna plug this in first, just like that. And then we are going to take the power cable and plug it right in here as well. And on the front, you will see this white dot indicating that it is turned on. So now we're going to head into the Google Home application. And here at the top right, make sure that it is your Google account that you want it to be connected to. And then we're going to select the plus to add our device. And then we're going to select set up device. And here we have set up new device in your home. So we're gonna tap on that. We're going to choose the home we want it connected to. So I only have one home there. And now it's going to look for new devices. Here it's giving us a bunch of options, but right there at the top, you see Nest Wi-Fi router. So we're gonna choose that and select next. And now we need to scan the QR code on the bottom of the device. So right there, you can see the QR code. And we're just gonna use our phone to do that. So now the code has been scanned and it is creating our new network. Now we need to select which room we want the Nest Wi-Fi to be in. So here I have a bunch of different rooms. I'm actually going to add this into my electrical room, but for now, let's just add it right into the office and we're going to select next. And now we're going to give our Wi-Fi a name. So this is the name that your devices will connect to. Now to make the transition from my old network to the Nest Wi-Fi as seamless as possible, I'm going to have it be the same name as my previous network. And now we're going to create a secure password. Now I'm also going to make this the same password that my previous device was set up on so that they can easily switch to this new network. And here we have the option to report stats back to Google on our Nest router. So I'm going to select, yes, I'm in. And now it's telling us a bit more about cloud services that are going to be working with the Nest Wi-Fi. So Nest Wi-Fi can store and analyze data about your entire network and devices. You can turn this off anytime in the settings. And also when guests connect to your network, it will also collect some of their info so you can see who has been added to your network. So we're gonna select, yes, I'm in. And now it is creating our new Wi-Fi network. Now that step is complete, but it knew that we have a two pack. So it's asking if we want to set up our other device. If you only got a one pack and later you want to add a device, you will just follow the same steps in going into the Google Home application, setting up a new device, and then going through that process. But we're gonna set up the second device right now. So we're gonna select yes. And here it's talking about where to place your Wi-Fi point. So Wi-Fi points work best when they are no more than two rooms apart from each other. And then to use the assistant built in the Wi-Fi point, put it in a place where you can easily talk to it. And we're gonna now just plug in our Wi-Fi point. Now, once we hear the chime, we are ready to continue. On the bottom here, it's lighting up. That's actually really cool. Okay, so we're gonna select next. It has discovered our Nest Wi-Fi point. Now, real quick, I do wanna mention that you can also connect the Google Wi-Fi points to your Nest Wi-Fi system. Now, one of the benefits of using the new Wi-Fi system is it has a 2200 square foot signal where the old Nest Wi-Fi is only a 1600 square foot signal. So if you wanna add the Nest Wi-Fi router and then other Google Wi-Fi points, you are able to do that. But here we're gonna set up the Nest Wi-Fi point and we're going to select next. And now it is connecting this to the router and creating that mesh network. Okay, that is complete. And yes, we did hear the sound. And now we're going to agree to legal terms. And here we're going to accept to improve Google devices. And now we are going to choose the room we want to add this device to. Now I pretty much have a Google speaker in all of these rooms. So we're actually gonna put this in the laundry room right there. Select next. And it's going to add that room to our Google Home and then connect this to the router. The Wi-Fi point has been added to our Wi-Fi network. And because this has Google Assistant built in, we're now going to go through the Google Assistant setup. So it's gonna connect with Google partners, other services, and then talking about how the Assistant works with guests. Now it's asking to set up voice match. That's how it can know the difference between you and the other people that live within your home. You can have six different people connected. My voice settings have already been linked to my Google account. So it's just going to add that to the Wi-Fi point. And here it's asking if I want personal voice results. Yes, I do. And now we have the option to link our music services. I've already done that. YouTube music. Here we could add XM radio. Here we could link different video services. 
Here it is asking if we want it to add it to other groups that we have within our home. It automatically checked the mini group. I'm gonna uncheck that for now and uh, we'll choose those later. You can also use this for voice calls through Google Duo. There it's gonna choose our number and now the laundry room Wi-Fi is ready. And here, if I had a bigger home, we could add another device or we could add the Google Wi-Fi device, but I don't need to do that right now. So I'm gonna select not now. Now it is testing the mesh network between these two. It's not gonna be a great example because they're right next to each other. So here it says they currently have a great connection and that's good because they're right next to each other. And here it's asking if we wanna stay up to date on the latest Google hardware. So you can sign up there or decline. And now it is gonna go through and update these devices. The Nest Wi-Fi is now up to date. So now it is going through what we have done. Here, our Wi-Fi name, our Wi-Fi password. We have completed the Nest Wi-Fi router setup and we have completed the laundry room Wi-Fi point as well. So now it's going through what you can do with the Google Assistant on the Wi-Fi point. And now we're gonna select finish setup. Now, before we move these into the proper location, let's check out some of the settings that you can adjust on your Nest Wi-Fi. And you can do all of this within the Google Home application. And right here at the top, we have our Wi-Fi. So we're gonna open up the settings here. Here it's showing us we're connected to the internet. We have two Wi-Fi points, and then we have two devices that are added. So here we could select show the password, and then we can easily copy, share, or email that to other people that may be coming into our home. Right here, we have the option to run a speed test. So we're gonna select that right now and it's going to test the speed. <laughs> I'd say that's pretty good. 83 megabits per second download and 77 upload. Uh, your last speed test was done December 17th and it's lightning fast. So that was today. Now you also have the option to do that with your Google Assistant. Hey Google. Run a speed test. Okay, testing the network speed. I'll tell you the results shortly. Your network speed test has finished. The download speed on the Bristow is currently 75 megabits per second and the upload speed is 74 megabits per second. So that's pretty incredible to be able to do that without opening up the application. So now we're gonna scroll down here. We can see the different devices and we can also set priority to devices. And then we have the option to set up family Wi-Fi and set up a guest network. We'll do that in a little bit. Now up here at the top, we do have the settings. So when you open this up, you can change the network name and you also have the option to change the password. Here you can set up the family Wi-Fi, guest Wi-Fi, you can use WPA3, and then we have the option for gaming preferred. So soon I'm going to be setting up Stadia and reviewing that. So I'll definitely want to turn that on for gaming then. Here you have the option to change your privacy setting and a few other options. So we're gonna go back and then you also have the option to go into each Wi-Fi point and adjust the settings there. So here we can go into the Wi-Fi points and right here I have Nest Wi-Fi router. I open that up and it's gonna take me to the full settings of this device. And you can run a speed test just on this device. And I can also go to the settings here. And now I can change this name. I could change the home it's in, change the room, change the status light brightness. So at the bottom, you'll see a status light and you can adjust that there. And then you can see some other Wi-Fi information. So not a ton of settings on the Nest Wi-Fi router, but if we go back and if we go into the laundry room Wi-Fi, we have the same option where we could run a mesh test. Up here, we have the option to change from the Wi-Fi settings to the speaker settings. So when you tap there, now it's showing you the volume of the device. You can cast your audio from Android devices and you can also change the bass and treble right up here. And then if we click settings, we're now gonna see all of our device settings. So you can control the alarms and timers on this device, the name, where it's located, the groups that it's in, the Wi-Fi it's connected to, all those other settings that you have. And it also has the same setting that the new Nest Mini has, which is ultrasound sensing. So if you're playing music and you reach your hand close, it's actually gonna show you where to change the volume with the lights illuminating. Hey Google. Play my new gems playlist. So there you can see the lights right there. So now if I reach my hand close, there you can see that the lights light up so I can easily tap to change the volume or increase the volume. And in the middle, you also have the pause option as well. And then there are a few more settings down here. And then you also have the option to change the bottom light brightness as well. So I can lower the brightness there or increase the brightness. And then here you can turn off the mute light. So on the back here, I can the mute the device. Off. And here you can see it's showing orange on the bottom. So if I don't want that to show and I just want it to always be muted, I can come in here, turn that off, the orange light goes away, and now you cannot access Google. The Look mic's that. back on. Okay, Google. Thanks for all your help. Happy to help.
and here at the bottom, you saw the light indicating that it was listening to me. And then down at the very bottom, you can reset the Wi-Fi or factory reset. So those are all the settings that you have with the Wi-Fi router and the base point. Now in your home, because we have added those two specific rooms, you can also go to that room and adjust those settings. So here we have the laundry room Wi-Fi in the laundry room. And then down here in the office, we have the Nest Wi-Fi router. Now that we have everything properly set up, checked out all the settings, let's go ahead and put these in the proper location, removing our old router. And also I'm going to show you the placement where I'm gonna put this so that it really adds to my Wi-Fi. Now, if you don't know, I also deal with a lot of smart home products within my home, like different hubs and things that need to be directly connected to my router. So to be able to do that, I'm actually going to be using the LAN port here on the bottom. And because this only has one LAN, I'm going to be connecting a switch. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove my existing Wi-Fi router. And now I'm going to be plugging in the modem directly into the WAN port on my Nest Wi-Fi. And then I'm going to take another network cable and I'm going to plug that directly into the first port on my switch. Now this switch has eight ports and it allows for seven devices to be directly connected to my Wi-Fi router. So this is really important for your computer. If you're doing gaming, you want it to be directly connected into here. Or if you have hubs like the Samsung SmartThings hub or the Philips Hue hub, you will need to directly connect those. So I will leave a link to the switch that I'm using in the description below. Once it is connected, they will automatically be connected to the internet through the hub, and now it is ready to go. I also wanna mention that the best location for your Nest Wi-Fi router is to have it in an area that is in direct line of sight with other devices that you're using. So it's not great to put it next to walls and doors and other things that would decrease the performance, but this is the location that I'm going to keep it in for now. Now you also wanna make sure that this is off the ground. Google also recommends to have this at eye level. And then also consider the overall mesh network. So making sure that your points aren't too far apart. So you wouldn't want them at opposite ends, upstairs and downstairs. You kind of want them overlapping up and down. Now that we have this installed, we're going to add our Google Nest Wi-Fi point, which is in the laundry room directly above this electrical room. Now I mentioned before, I pretty much have a Google speaker in every room in the house, and this is the only room that doesn't have a speaker, so I thought it would be a great place to put it. Now I may end up muting this Wi-Fi point if when we are activating the Nest Hub Max in the other room, if this one hears us instead, so that is to be determined. But all we need to do is plug this in, and everything is pretty much set up now. Let's go ahead and run another mesh test to see if everything is working properly. The test is complete and we still have a great connection. In Orem tomorrow, it'll be mostly cloudy with a high of 37 and a low of 18. Your network speed test has finished. The download speed on the Bristo is currently 77 megabits per second and the upload speed is 65 megabits per second. Keep the change, you filthy animal. I'm gonna give you to the count of 10 to get your attractive, brave, very good keister to wherever you want it to be. Now the Wi-Fi point does sound very similar to a Nest Mini, but uh, let's do a quick sound test. Now we're gonna move on to the next step of this process, and that is to move all of our existing devices that were connected to the router and make sure that they are now connected to the new Nest Wi-Fi system. So for me, I actually had two different Wi-Fi network names on my old router. So I had one that was for 2.4 gigahertz, and that was the Bristow. And then I had another one called Bristow 5G, which was for all the five gigahertz devices. Now with Nest Wi-Fi, you only need one SSID, and it's automatically going to choose if the device needs 2.4 or a five gigahertz gigahertz network. Now with the Nest Wi-Fi, I only set up one called Bristow and I did that so that all of those devices that were already connected to Bristow are automatically going to switch over. So I shouldn't have too many more devices to connect to the new network. So to do this, I decided to start with my Google devices because right here on screen, you can see that they are no longer connected. Now to do this, it's actually a pretty easy process. All you need to do is head back into the Google Home application. You could go through the ad in the top left corner if you can't find your device, but right here at the top, it says set up nine devices. So all I need to do is tap on there, choose the device I wanna set up, and then go through that full process. So I need to go through and set up my Nest Hub Max, 
my Nest Hub, my Smart Clock, my Nest Mini, and even my Chromecast devices. Now, certain devices will show things on the screen to verify that you're connecting to the right device, and others will simply just play a sound. And then here on the Chromecast device, you can see on screen those numbers as well. Now, with the Google devices, it was actually really easy because once I added the Wi-Fi network, it was now back into my home in the correct room, and it looked like it pretty much had all of its settings. Now, the second part to this is to go through and find every other device that you use to get them back on the Wi-Fi. So currently at this point, I'm only at about 51 devices. So I think there are a few more that I need to go around and add. So here on my Pixel Book, it wasn't connecting. So I just needed to go back into the Wi-Fi settings and connect to the new network name. And then I needed to check all of my different smart devices. So at first, it actually wasn't connecting to my different hubs that I have set up on the switch. All I really needed to do was unplug the switch plug it back in, that allowed everything to get reset up and now everything is working just fine. Now, after I went through all my devices and make sure everything was working properly, we're gonna head back into the Wi-Fi settings and now you can see that I'm back to 58 devices that are connected to my network. That's the same number I had previously connected. Now, there may be one or two devices here and there that aren't on for some reason, I may need to reconnect, but uh, for the most part, everything looks great. Now, I do wanna mention that each device can connect up to 100 devices by itself. So the Wi-Fi router can connect 100 devices and then the Wi-Fi point can connect another 100 devices. So I should be able to connect up to 200 devices within my home. Now, even though I pretty much have every light and everything in my house, a smart device, I only still have 58 devices connected. So there should be plenty of room for you to expand your smart home as much as you would like. Now that all our devices are connected, if we scroll down here, we can see the devices. So tapping on this, it will show all of the devices that are currently connected and how much data they are using. So right here we have the link bar, which is an Android TV. So it looks like they are watching videos there. So it's using 4.3 megabits per second. Here we have the Chromecast Ultra behind me. Currently it's idle, so it's not pulling down any info. Right here we have the Nest Hello. So it is always uploading its information to Nest. So it's at 12.6 kilobits per second. And so I can go through and see what's taking up the most usage on my network. And so it's really great to see all of that all in one list. Now, if there are devices that you wanna prioritize, so let's set a few of those up. Now, some of these don't have names on the previous menu, you can change that, but let's go through and add a few of these. So let's say I want the link bar to be the priority and I want the Nest Hello to be the priority. So you could prioritize for a certain amount of time. So just one hour, two hours, four hours. Maybe you have a bunch of family over and you want the main TV to have all the access. You can come in here and choose four hours. So it's gonna be the best at streaming. We can check the box there. And now at the top, it is showing that it's giving priority to this device until 5.16 p.m. and I could end it right there. Now, the last thing to do to really take advantage of the Nest Wi-Fi system is set up family Wi-Fi so that we have control of different devices and we can pause those devices with our Google Assistant. Now to do this, we're just gonna head in the Wi-Fi settings in the Google Home application. Here we have family Wi-Fi and we just need to select set up. So here it says this will help us remove online distractions. We can easily pause the Wi-Fi on kid devices or in the bedroom. And then down here we have the option to schedule or group different devices. So let's select get started. So our first group name is going to be kid devices. And now we're going to choose what devices those are. So we're gonna scroll through, here we have the nursery speaker, here we have the link bar, the kid's clock, and that's good for now. So we're gonna tap next, and then here we have the option to turn on safe search to automatically block millions of websites with adult content. Keep in mind that no filter can block every inappropriate site. So that's actually really important. So I'm gonna turn this on right now. Now this of course will be really nice if your kids have tablets and other devices that they're connecting to that have access to the full internet. This is great that it just adds that extra restriction right from the Wi-Fi. And now we can choose a schedule of when we want the Wi-Fi to automatically pause. So typically there's a certain time at night where we no longer want the kids to be watching TV and we want to have more family time. So I'm just gonna call this dinner time. And then we're gonna choose the devices that we want it to be added to. So the kids devices and the start time, let's choose 5.30. And then the end time, let's choose seven o'clock. And then here we can choose what nights we want that on. So we could have school nights, weekdays, weekends, or choose a custom. So let's go ahead and choose school nights. Select done. And there we go. Now we have the family Wi-Fi set up with the kid devices. I went ahead and created a second group called Family Devices. And these are other devices we use within our home. Here, my Chromecast Ultra and just other devices my wife and I use so that we can pause those for family time as well. So to quickly pause the kid devices, I just need to tap right here and it is now paused. 
And then whenever I want, I tap on it again and it will unpause. After testing this out today, it worked great. The kids were a little confused and then they started doing other things. So there you go. Now I can also do that via voice. All right, I have a video playing back here. So let's see how long it takes to pause. Pause Wi-Fi on family devices. Okay, pausing the Wi-Fi for family devices. And I do know IP66. All right, and there we now have the buffering symbol. So that took just about a minute to pause, which is actually really quick. I currently have the circle system and it takes a lot longer to pause. Now that may depend on the device and how much buffering it has done, but that worked pretty good. Now let's unpause it and see how quick it starts. Unpause Wi-Fi on family devices. Okay, unpausing the Wi-Fi for family devices. And that started right away. So that's pretty awesome to be able to have that function. Now, if you do have a time schedule set, you can't unpause the Wi-Fi by voice. You will need to go into the app and disable it for that time period. And the last option here in the application is to set up a guest network. So a guest network is great because you can give access to your Wi-Fi without them being able to see everything else that you have on your Wi-Fi. So let's turn on the guest network. And then here we can set a guest network name and then you can choose a password as well. And then you can choose a different password for the guest network so that nobody knows your actual Wi-Fi password. Next, there is an option to show guest network password on your Google Assistant enabled devices, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna keep that on. And then here we have the option to share specific devices to the guest network. So if we want our guests to connect to the TV or other devices within our home, we would come in here and choose that. So let's say we want them to connect to the Nest Hub and we're gonna select save. All right, and we are done. So we're gonna select back. And now here we have our guest network. And here I can quickly show the password. I can copy it, message it, or email it. Let's check out what that looks like on the Nest Hub. So here from the home view, all you need to do is tap on the Wi-Fi. Here you could take a speed test or you can select guest Wi-Fi and it's gonna show you the SSID and the password. You most likely can open the camera app on your phone, point it at the QR code, and then here it's going to automatically connect you to the Wi-Fi network. Now, yes, this will also work with iPhones. Select join. And now you can see that we are connected. Dun, dun, dun. Now, one of the other nice things about the guest network is you can easily come in here and turn it off so that nobody has access to that anymore. Now that just about does it for all the settings that you can adjust within the Google Home application. Now there is one more thing I want to show you that if you go into the settings and let's say you want to adjust the advanced networking settings. So if you open this up, this is actually going to take you into the Google Wi-Fi application where you can come in here and adjust those advanced networking settings. Now there are a few more things that I found within the Google Wi-Fi app that I wanna show you how to do. So here you can download this app as well. I don't know if these features are going to come into the Google Home application, but this is where you can find them right now. So you can see it automatically pulls in all the same info that we added to the Google Home app. We have two Wi-Fi points, we have family Wi-Fi dinner time, we have our internet speed. So up here at the top, we have our internet and we have our different devices, but we just want to tap on the internet right here. And here you can see a speed test. So it's actually been doing the speed tests throughout the day so that you can see where your internet has been. So at the higher time, so let's say when I had 83 megabits per second, that was probably when nobody was using the internet. And then here I had 37 megabits per second. That is when we were using high traffic and we had lower download speeds then. So that's really cool that you can see that information. And then we also have usage up here at the top. So if I tap usage, it's gonna show the current usage of the internet right now in my home. So we're not downloading very much. It's kind of in the middle of the night, but if I wanna see what the usage was for yesterday, I can do that. So I can tap real time and then I can change to one day. So this is gonna show over the last day, we have used 37.3 gigabytes of internet, which is quite a lot. And we have uploaded 10 gigabytes. And that's because we do a lot of uploading with the Nest Hello and other things. Now, if I wanna see the last week, I can do that or up to the last month. So here in the last week, just after two days, we've used 50.7 gigabytes of internet. Now this is really great to know, especially if you have an internet service provider that charges you after so much usage, you can come in here and make sure that you're staying under that limit. Now, if we go back to the main page and you go into devices, you can actually find out how much each device used. So here on the link bar, this is our main device that we're using for smart TV functions. We can see that it used a majority of that usage. And then if we go back 
and we want to check out what the nest to load did. We can see that it only did a little bit of downloading, but it did a ton of uploading. So it's really cool that you have such a good breakdown of every single device that is on your network. So those are just a few other cool things you can do within the Google Wi-Fi application. So I'm really excited to see what the Nest Wi-Fi system is going to do to my home network. Now I did mention before, we haven't really had too many issues, but when we did, there was always a problem and it most likely was because of the router. Most of those things were like the updates. I had to go in and manually install the firmware update where with the Nest Wi-Fi system, I no longer will have to do that. It automatically is able to update on its own. Some of the other things is I just wasn't getting as fast of a connection. And now with the Nest Wi-Fi, I'm getting even more than I pay for. So I'm really excited to have that as well. And then it's just very simple. I'm excited about everything being in the Google Home application. I'm already using that app multiple times a day. So it's great that everything is right in there and it's easily to adjust and set up all those things. And it's really awesome that I can now pause the Wi-Fi via Google Assistant integration. Now, if you have any further questions about Nest Wi-Fi, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to see my other videos all about made by Google products, check out the videos over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Guess I won't be needing this anymore.